it, it's, it, it is important to not just look at the risks associated with your dreams and goals, but what are the corresponding emotions attached to those those risks? Because what happens, and man, I, I, I wish I could tell you all these different stories of these different corporate clients that, that I'm working with, and, and, and not just corporate clients, but me. Like This applies to me. It just gets old sometimes talking about all my issues and junk in my trunk. But how much our behavior and decisions, daily decisions and behavior are 100% associated and attached to, directly correlate with our ability or lack thereof to identify, process, and manage our own emotions. Welcome to the EQ for Entrepreneurs podcast. Like most business owners, you already know you need good business and marketing strategies to scale and be profitable. But at some point, you hit the dreaded wall where you feel stuck and frustrated. EQ for Entrepreneurs is for business owners and leaders who are honest enough to admit that they just might be the ones holding their business back and are brave enough to change that. We're Noble and Kathy, and every week we're having candid conversations about all things emotional intelligence and how growing that has allowed us to get out of our own way and is radically transforming both our businesses and our personal lives. This is the secret sauce strategy for modern entrepreneurs who are tired of hustling without seeing results and want to grow a business and a life that they love. entrepreneurs, leaders, and influencers. So excited for this episode. What, how, how good are you at calculating and evaluating the risks that go along with your particular dreams or goals? And along with that risk calculation are the associated emotions that go along with those respective risks. Excuse me, for, for example, for example, uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I've been doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu now for, oh, I think three years, maybe a little over three years. No, right, right somewhere, anyway, around three years, and and it it has become an absolute passion of mine, and part of my mental, emotional, and physical therapy. To be honest with you, there's so many layers of growth, and and again. I won't say least of which are the moves because they're it's great learning the moves and great learning self-defense and that kind of thing. But there are so many other things, life lessons and things to be gleaned from doing Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Well, there are also some inherent risks that go along with, you know, doing something as, as intense as, as Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And even though... You know, it is considered the the gentle art. <laughs> I, I haven't figured out where the gentle piece is of the art, uh, but it, it, you know. But anyway, you know, because it, it 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 can be very very intense. And so, anytime you're doing anything physical, there are risks risks associated. So, could could injuries happen? Absolutely. And there are a lot of factors that go into what would increase the chances of risk of, of injury, what could decrease the chances of, of, of injury. But still, the fact is, it is a very, very physical activity. So, so there are some inherent risks associated with that. Well, what are the corresponding emotions that go along with those risks? Is there any trauma? Is there any pain? Is there any and, and I mean, and I don't mean necessarily even physical pain, but that's obviously a consideration. But emotional pain is there any emotional pain? Is there, you know, what are the uh, associated or corresponding emotions that are attached to the risks of doing physical activity? And in this case, and in this specific analogy, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So, wh what are other some of your other goals and dreams? Another one, we, right now, we're looking at a particular house and the road to get there is pretty precarious but it, it you know and it, anyway, so it's pretty precarious for like six miles of kind of six miles of precariousness and you know our daughter will be will be driving age here very soon 
And so one of the risks associated with this potential house that we're looking at right now is, okay, we're gonna have a daughter, you know, that'll be driving here in a couple years, in a few years. Do we want her, you know, as a junior driver to be driving on a, you know, precarious road during all four seasons? Snow and, and, and rain and, you know, lots of mud and, and, and you know, ice and, you know, all the different factors, right, that go into that. And then what are the, the corresponding emotions that go into the, the risk of, of getting that house that we really, really like uh, that have the associated risks with, you know, again, with, with, with the, the drive, the road to get there. So uh, another one, we became, you know, financially independent at 30 years old or me, I did at 30 years old. My wife was 27 when, when we replaced her income. I was 30 when we replaced my income. And oh man, it was exciting, it was amazing. What were the risks associated with that endeavor or that pursuit or that phase of our life? Well, as it turns out, the risks were we, though we grew financially in our passive income, uh, we did not grow, and I would even say, not only did we not grow our emotional well-being, our emotional health, but we further injured it just based on the environment that we were in and uh, the culture and that kind of thing. So, but but there's a risk, and, and look at the reward. Oh man, Noble, like why are you complaining, dude? You you know you got financial independent. Your wife at 27, you at 30. Like, dude, like that's that that the reward is worth the risk. And so ultimately, that's where, again, you have to evaluate the, the associated risks. And again, I would go one step further, the corresponding emotions that are attached to every single risk that you take. Because, you know, the, the other option, rather than, than pursuing this you know, pursuing financial freedom and trying to do it in five years like we did would be, hey, I'm not gonna, th that's too risky. There's a lot of corresponding risks associated with doing that. Like say, for example, here's another, uh, in terms of the opportunity cost, which is kind of a business term, the opportunity cost is the cost that, the, the uh, this is not gonna be eloquent, but it's the cost of me not doing what I chose to do. So for example, I chose to pursue financial freedom for five years and fortunately was able to do it. But during that, that five years while I was pursuing financial freedom, all my classmates were moving up the corporate ladder. They were, you know, yeah, move, moving on up like George Jefferson, that's old school. <laughs> that's an old school TV show sitcom back in the days. So the opportunity cost was me not being able to climb up the corporate ladder because I chose to pursue financial independence. Now, fortunately, it worked out for me in, in one regard, financially, it worked out for me. Emotionally, though, that's another one, right? I could have potentially now, you know, I'll just say it, but you know, who knows? I don't know if I would have ever come to this conclusion if I had not done that, but another opportunity cost is I could have potentially started my emotional growth journey sooner had I not been in that environment that that I was in for that number of years. Now, again, that's a massive what if, but that is a potential opportunity cost for me pursuing financial independence in the direction that I that I chose to pursue it because there's a lot of a lot of different ways that you could pursue financial independence. And I just happened to choose one that was not super emotionally healthy, uh, you know, but again, that's not to say that, that others are not emotionally healthy. It's just the one that I particularly chose was not, was not a super emotionally healthy environment and led to some, uh, a lot of emotional consequences, uh, a lot of emotionally unhealthy consequences. So it, it's, it, it is important to not just look at the risks associated with your dreams and goals, but what are the corresponding emotions attached to those those risks? Because what happens, and man, I, I, I wish I could tell you all these different stories of these different corporate clients that, that I'm working with, and, and, and not just corporate clients, but me, like this applies to me, it just gets old sometimes talking about all my issues and junk in my trunk, but how much our behavior 
and decisions, daily decisions and behavior are 100% associated and attached to directly correlate with our ability or lack thereof to identify, process, and manage our own emotions. How many vices do you have? How many unhealthy behaviors do you have? How many inefficiencies do you have in your life? How many unproductive aspects or areas of, of your life do you have? I would make an argument. Now, again, I am not a psychologist. I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not a, a therapist. I'm not a counselor. I'm, I, you know, I'm not medically trained. I would, in my own personal experience, my own personal life experience, I would argue that there is a percentage, and in my case, a massive percentage to the tune of 95, 98, maybe even 99% of my behaviors and my my unproductivities, my inefficiencies, my unhealthy expressions, my inappropriateness, my immaturity was all due to a, or has been due to a lack of maturity, a lack of being able to identify, process and manage my own emotions. And you know, and and, and part of that is it takes self-awareness. Well, if you're not even aware of this stuff, you could say, well, no, well, that's just your deal. That's just your deal, bro. That's, that's, you know, you, you're messed up or you're jacked up. Your leadership has been jacked up. Your businesses have been jacked up because of your own emotional unhealthiness, but I'm, I'm healthy emotionally. Well, I, I, another thing I would argue is these scientific EQ tests that I have access to now, it, you know, and again, if you want to check that out, you go to eqforentrepreneurs.com forward slash training, eqforentrepreneurs.com forward slash training. And, you know, you can sign up and, and along with that test or assessment that you would get would be a one hour call or discussion so that I could help interpret the scores that you would receive in your EQ assessment. What's been fascinating is how many high achievers and high performers that have taken that assessment that actually have a number of areas that they have lower emotional intelligence in. Like most, like 98 to 99% of the high achievers that, that have taken that assessment from, from me personally. And, and again, these are our from all outside external appearances, there's not one person who say, oh, that, that, that guy's not successful. That lady is not successful. No, across the board. Oh yeah, that's definitely a successful executive. That, that is definitely a successful leader or business owner or influencer. They're definitely successful. In spite of that external appearance, isn't it amazing how good we all are at hiding and masks and facades all of our emotional issues, emotional junk in our trunk, and how much, again, of our behaviors and uh, performances and, and, and that kind of thing are due to are are due to unhealthy reasons. Why 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 was I so likable growing up for most of my life? Because I've been a people pleaser addict for most of my life. So, again, you can be successful in an area of your life for unhealthy reasons. And, you know, I was just thinking about the concept today of dreams and goals and how important they are to have in our lives, but to also acknowledge the reality that for any dream or goal that you have, there are risks associated. Again, whether you're aware of it or not, and I think it would be a healthy exercise to draw, write out your goals and dreams, also write out the corresponding risks and then write down the corresponding emotions that are associated with those respective risks that are attached to your respective goals and dreams because our emotions end up driving our behavior regardless of your of whether you're aware of it or not. And so to be intentional and to grow in your self-awareness, I think it'd be a great exercise to do that. Write out your dreams and goals, write out the risks associated, then write out the the corresponding emotions attached and then see, okay, man, I need to do some work here emotionally. I need to do some emotional work 
and some emotional work, what I'm in reference to, some of you all have asked, well, what, dude, what is emotional work? That's what I asked probably for the first year or two of my emotional growth journey. It was like, what? When they say emotional work, what does that even mean? I don't even know what that means. Go check out my episode on the three emotional tools to increase your emotional bandwidth. That's the kind of work I'm talking about. Now, I, those are just three exercises. There's a truckload more exercises, but those are three that have been very, very helpful in, in, in my own emotional growth journey. And then also one of my other recent episodes that I did, I think it may have been even the episode prior to this, where I talked about the Mood Meter app. The Mood Meter app is also an excellent tool. You can download it, I think it's 99 cents on the App Store to begin helping grow your self-awareness. And another buzzword, I just got done talking to my, one of my counselors and one of the things that she said was a, a huge aspect of emotional health and stuff is mindfulness. Well, what is a huge aspect of mindfulness but self-awareness? So that Mood Meter app could really be a value add for you in your emotional growth journey and just what's the best way to create a new habit is attach it to a habit that you already have. So you wake up every day, you go to bed every day, you eat a couple meals, two or three meals a day. So those are a handful of habits right there that you could attach the Mood Meter app to. Okay, every time I, you know, before I eat breakfast, I gotta bust out the Mood Meter app. Before I go to bed, I gotta bust out the Mood Meter app. Before I work out, I gotta bust out the Mood Meter app. Just, you know, something, a habit that you've already got. If you know you're doing your devotions or your, you know, a Bible study or something like that, boom, boom. So, okay, I'm gonna also include, incorporate my emotional growth uh, along with my spiritual growth and I'm going to bust out the mood meter app. So anyway, a lot of different ways to, to, to do that, to apply those skills. But anyway, just wanted to, 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 to mention that, discuss that with you guys. Remember, unaddressed emotional issues do not get better over time. They only compound. Unaddressed emotional issues do not get better over time. They actually compound. Emotionally healthy people help heal other people emotionally. Emotionally healthy people help heal other people emotionally. Thank you.